To everyone that was discouraged by my last workflow video, you can create a feature length animation using just one app and it's completely free. Some of you may remember a video that I made a year and a half ago where I went through a full workflow from concept to final image. And I think there was a little bit of confusion that I just want to clear up as well as give you a couple of alternative workflows that I use in 2019. In the last video, I was trying to be as comprehensive as possible by outlining all the stages of production as well as all the potential apps you could use. Well, most of them anyway. The truth is, you can go from concept to final image using just ZBrush or using just Blender or using just 3D Core. You don't have to pay for every single piece of software out there and you don't have to follow a procedure down to a T, especially not when the shock. It just depends on what you're trying to achieve. Workflows aren't static and there's no one size fits all. So what I thought I'd do is show you two approaches that I take for two different types of projects and hopefully that might shine some light on the best way to interpret my previous tutorial. The first type is the long project where I try to push my skills to the next level by addressing each stage of the process thoroughly. I take my time more and I tend to use more specialised software for each part of the project. The second type is the speed sculpt, where I'm more focused on being as efficient as I can to get to the end result. So for a long sculpt, I tend to stick to a workflow similar to what you saw in the last video. I always start off in ZBrush and create an A-posed mesh of whatever character I'm working on. This allows me to use symmetry for as long as possible. Now at this point, I'm aware that the next stage in the process is retopology. And I tend to retopologize midway through a sculpt because retopology doesn't just make the rigger's life easier, it also makes sculpting easier as well because you get the lower subdivision levels. So I recommend doing retopology pretty early and I'll use Zebra Mesher to its full advantage at this point too. I don't use it for the face or body, I do that manually like really early on, but everything else is likely to get remeshed once or twice. Having said that, for some objects I'll use ZBrush less as a sculpting tool and more of a modelling tool to avoid retopology altogether. A simple example of what I mean by this can be seen with these earrings. I could just chuck in a Dynamesh sphere, chop it in half, and then put it in place, but then I'd have to retopologize it later. So instead I'll initialize the primitive, and this is something I spoke about in the 5 hidden gems in ZBrush video if you want to go and check that out. This way it's got the topology I want right out of the box, and I don't need to worry about it until much later. Once my model is looking pretty good, I'll export any models that need more specific topology to be done manually in 3D Core. You know, it really doesn't matter what app you use to do your retopology. You can use Blender or even ZBrush. I just happen to like 3D Coats retopology tools. But no matter what app I use at this stage, the meshes always return back to ZBrush. My initial goal is to get a fully retopologized character in a neutral pose in ZBrush. I'm not concerned with UVs or texturing or any of that yet because if I start doing that now, I'll just end up getting lost. Obviously I do a bit of poly painting, but that's just for me while I'm still inside ZBrush. Once I get to a point where I'm happy, I'll make sure I have the model at the correct scale using Scale Master, I'll leave you a link, and then I'll send her over to Blender. Now it's at this point that Blender becomes the primary app. So before, whenever the objects left ZBrush, I'd do my work to them and then they'd always return back to ZBrush. But now it's any work that I do to an object outside of Blender always returns immediately back to Blender. And like I said, this is just to avoid getting lost. I do want to make sure I'm keeping the models consistent between Blender and ZBrush though, to avoid any confusion later. Then once I'm in Blender, I'll give my models UVs. Now most of the time, not every single object needs UVs because I do some of the shading procedurally in the Node Editor. In this case, what I tend to do is, even though technically I don't need to give it UVs, I'll just give it dirty automatic UVs anyway. The reason for this is that soon I'm probably going to want to texture some objects in Substance Painter, and rather than texture them all individually, I want to import all of my objects at the same time, so I can see how they're looking next to each other. Since Substance Painter rejects models without UVs, I just run them through an auto UV. Before I get carried away with texturing though, I start setting up some basic lighting and shaders. I might also jump back to ZBrush 
and bake out any displacement maps. Now, contrary to popular opinion, I actually like baking in ZBrush because it's simple. There's no messing about with multiple objects because the high poly and low poly information is contained within the subdivision levels. But once I've got my basic shader set up, I'll then move on to texturing. Now, as I say, I don't texture everything by hand. I do some procedural stuff in Blender, but most non-skin and hair stuff I do in Substance, which begs the question, where do I texture skin and hair? And I do actually use ZBrush for that. And again, I've made a tutorial, so just follow the link. So once I've got all my textures and I've plugged them into my shaders and played around with the settings until they look nice, it's time to pause this character. If you saw my top 5 Blender add-ons video, you'll know that at this point I give my model a quick rig using Auto Rig Pro and pause it with some really basic weights. I could spend a lot of time fixing these weights, but it's a lot quicker to send the model over to ZBrush and fix any deformation problems there. If you want to try this technique by the way, I would recommend duplicating the model because you need to apply the rig to do it, which means you can't use it anymore. One thing I should mention is that if I'm making clothes using Marvelous Designer, I'll actually jump in there at this point too, because what I'll do is simulate the cloth while it's in the final pause. Once it's paused, I'll then finalise the lighting and do any final tweaks before hitting the final render button. Of course, the final render is still not final, as I bring it and any render passes into Photoshop for further tweaking. So that's generally how I approach a longer piece, and I only mention five apps. ZBrush, 3D Coat, Blender, Substance Painter and Marvelous Designer. But let's see how I might take a shorter approach. All right guys, I just wanted to quickly interrupt the recording for two reasons really. Obviously it's because I needed some sort of excuse to show that I've got a new 27 inch uh, Wacom Cintiq. Um, but the second reason is because I wanted to show you just how ridiculously bad I deliver the next line. So the line is, I know that I'm going to be using ZBrush for the majority of this piece. So I know that I'm going to be using for the majority of the piece. And I think restricting yourself like this is good for getting the creative juices going. Obviously, I'm going to use it for doing modeling and sculpting anyway. That's easy. But retopology, I'm mostly going to leave to Z remesher. And I think that's permissible in this situation because it's not going to be rigged. I do take a bit more time with the face though because as I say, good topology is really useful for sculpting too. And we can get really nice face topology using Z remesher using an older technique, which again, you'll find linked. And this technique actually works better in ZBrush 2019. However, I also use another strategy for times like these. First, I'll import a mesh that I've already retopologized. What I can do from here is start wrapping this around the mesh I've started creating. When I'm in a good position, I'll project the details onto the new mesh and repeat this on higher subdivision levels. Eventually, I end up with a new mesh with decent topology. Moving on, I don't need to worry about baking because we're going to render this in ZBrush, which can handle the high poly meshes anyway, no problem. And I don't need to worry about UVs either because we're going to use ZBrush's poly painting and masking tools. To pause the character, I'll use ZBrush's transpose tools. Again, this is followed by a cleanup with the sculpting tools. Now, generally, I don't do a lot of shading with materials with sculpts like these. I quite like the effect I get when everything has this soft cartoonish feel. But you can dig into the ZBrush materials and achieve a more realistic effect if that's what you're going for. Sorry, again, I'm going to have to interrupt the original recording and re-record the end because I made a total hash of it, basically. I was going to try and disguise this by wearing the same clothing. Then I thought, you know what, I want to frame this shot properly instead of having my head halfway down the screen like it has been throughout the video so far. I don't know if you noticed. Anyway, moving on. You might also want to try experimenting with the new NPR filters in ZBrush, which I'm kind of excited to start playing with. But for now, what I usually do is when I'm ready to start rendering, I'll save out the camera by adding a keyframe to the timeline. And then this way, if I accidentally move the camera, I can always jump back into that position. ZBrush 2019 does allow you to lock the position of your camera, but I like to add the keyframe as a backup. And now I'll use the ZBrush to Photoshop plugin. And what this will do is render out a bunch of different passes and arrange them nice and bonny inside Photoshop for further tweaking. 
One thing I like about this is that it'll render out a bunch of different light setups, so you can add more lights to your model right here in Photoshop. But from here, it's pretty much the same story as before. I'm manipulating the passes into something I can call a final image. But notice that I use nothing more than ZBrush and Photoshop. And to be honest, I didn't even need to use Photoshop, especially if I want to play with the new ZBrush filters. And that's essentially it. No faffing about with loads of different software. You can just use one or two and jobs are good. If you enjoyed this video, please tickle the subscribe button, smash the like button and give the bell a ring or whatever YouTuber. See ya.